Hi, I'm Chef Sean Quillin. We're here in Orinjuak Town. Everybody, when you talk about Orinjuak, what do they talk about? Tacos. So we're here today to find out what makes this tacos so special. Dala tacos? Dala tacos. Thank you, ma'am. Everybody wants to know the secret about the tacos. What is it? Basically, it's corn tortillas, ricardo, and meat. So today we're going to go in the village of San Jose Palmar to find out the real authentic way to make this ricardo, tortilla, and all the special secret spices that goes along with it. So we're going to get this anato achiote. Watch this technique. <laughs> Isn't this big? <laughs> Beautiful. That's good, so we could make some ricardo from this? Okay. So Miss Juanita is telling me that you need to take this and peel it and dry it, dry it in the sun for a month. And from there, we're gonna make it into the ricardo as we know, with the grinding and adding of the spices. We're at the home of Miss Juanita Caceres in San Jose Palmar Village in Orinjoac District. I want, I mean, we're trying to find out this secret about the Orinjoac tacos, you know, and even if I was to make it at home, or many families are, we're making stew chicken on Sunday, we hear about Recado, and this is what we know is Recado. We buy this at the store, and I already asked Miss Juanita, is this good, Miss Juanita? No, no sirve. Por qué? This has filler, this has masa. So Miss Juanita said, I throw that way. And we will go to the anato or the achiote and make recado. Cloves. Ricardo is, I mean, it's as much as a Creole dish or um, condiment uh, in Benque and San Ignacio. Of course, they use Ricardo. Cumin, they love cumin in San Ignacio and Cayo District too. Oregano? Oregano. Besides Ricardo, are there any other ways to use the anato? Solo para Ricardo? Es medicina también. Ajá. Esto cuando el, uno sale de su casa, de su cuarto, viene del sol y baña, uh -huh. le sale unas lonchas uh -huh. grandes y entonces este se pone en el, el, el esto se pone aquí y se pone un poco de, de, de agua y uh -huh. entonces con eso. Again, we're not to give you the recipe to here. If you want it, you have to come to Palmar. You sell? You sell vending? Yes, I sell a lot. And no more recipe, you have to come back and get it yourself. Cebolla. <laughs> we put onion. In the Caribbean, this is called ruku. They know it as ruku, but they don't eat it like we, in our culture, like mestizo culture and so they use it just like as paint and for color. Yes. Okay, now we're going to add vinegar. Sometimes it's optional to put vinegar, but vinegar will be more as a preservative. So, you know, everyone, family living in the United States, they want Ricardo. So, if you were to send this to your daughter or someone in the States, or abroad or anywhere, you need to put the vinegar for acid as a preservative. This alone, you could tell from the garlic, the onions, the spices, this is a rich, like the French would call a sachet de epices. It's like a, a, just a flavorful amount of uh, herbs. And already, you just could cook some pork and nice layer of fat in that with this. Already becoming so appetizing. So what do we do next to this? Esto lo vamos a que se remoje bien. Entonces lo vamos a moler. 
gonna grind it. This is already beautiful, by the way. I smell it. It's just amazing. So anato, what is it? Like peppery? Little. Some people say like nutmeg. So slight background hint of spice. Do you put chile? No. So you don't have to put pepper, but that could be your preference later on. It's like when you're making a soup and you you add salt and you reduce it and then you, you can't subtract. So you don't want to put this, the, the pepper now to your preference. So the next step now is naturally to grind the mixture of the herbs and the anato. So we, we're going to use a corn mill, not a food processor. And if I turn this, you're going to see some, you see all them thing will look like dirt, they come out. That's not dirt, that's black pepper that was ground for yesterday. So things like this has a lot of character. You don't even need to wash it with soap, right? <laughs> and okay, I'll help you. As you can see, it's coming out there kind of coarse. So what Miss Juanita is saying that you need to do it like three times to get to a consistency of a taste. I'll tell you one thing, I'm, the, 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 the odor, the, the olor is so beautiful at this point. Especially when the garlic and the onion and you hear the crackling of the black pepper. Do you make corn? Mm -hmm. you, make, you make dokuno? <laughs> and you do the corn here for the tamal también? Everything. Look okay. here. This is no water, you know. Sweat. Miss Juanita said, not done yet. Wrong too, because it's too coarse. We need to do it again. <laughs> okay. Dale! <laughs> Everybody, we, we, we see it a lot in the stores. This is, uh, we buy cheese and we buy cheddar cheese. And cheddar cheese is yellow. Think about it. Cheese made from milk. Milk is naturally white. When you make cheddar cheese, it's white. We put anato in it for for coloring, huh? So you make chicken, guisado. Mm -hmm. What what do you make with this ricardo here at home? And then pollo, pollo, and then carne de cochino, rico, res, caldo, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. tamales, tamales. So naturally now you see this is the the first grind. This is the second grind. We're getting to a. If I touch it, remember the vinegar to give it a little um, moisture. So we're gonna, by the third time, we're, we're gonna get this consistency that we're looking for the paste, you know? And as you can see, even my hands, that brick red color, beautiful. Siguemos! <laughs> I was asking Miss Juanita how we're gonna store this the best way. I would naturally would think about the refrigerator, but no, because it has the vinegar and salt, and salt is also a preserving agent and flavor. Three uh, grinds later, we have this. So what do we do now? One is sal. Sal. To taste, I don't know, it's just put. And again, salt, I could emphasize, I have to emphasize, when you're cooking, you have to put salt. Salt extracts more flavor. And already I'm telling you, I'm smelling this garlic and onion, but salt will extract, and of course, the white vinegar. Yes? You always see in, in cookbooks and TV shows, we talk about marinades and like ribs and in wet marinade, dry marinade. This is a perfect Belizean marinade for chicken, pork, beef, anything. That is it. Perfecto Torres. <laughs> if you look at it, yes. Poquito así. So you make um, like how you would see at the store. You make little portion, no? So you could save it for later. <laughs> sí. Again, we're in Orinjuac. The purpose of this. Do we put this in tacos? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, va a poner su lava su pollo. Ajá. Uh -huh. Y cara un pedazo. Si es un pollo entero, pues le pone esto. Sí. Okay. No mucho, sí. Okay. Chico. This sí. is highly concentrated, we don't need to. Entonces lo deslíe, ¿no? Así, entonces se lo pone al pollo, que se cocine con ellos, que hasta que quede suave, entonces. Okay. Ya, yeah, está listo. And then you shred it. 
Shred it. Ah, lo les pica el pollo y. Is this the secret to the orange wrap tacos? El secreto. <laughs> so orange wrap tacos will have a lot of characteristics that make it unique to this area. The the, the land, the, the what you fed the, the chicken, and also well the number one reason is the recado. Again, this has no fillers. It's just pure. That's why Miss Fan, uh, she said don't put a lot because it's highly concentrated. You don't need a lot of this. This is pure, pure. Look at my hand. Concentrated recado. Gracias, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, continuing on our journey of trying to decode this orange wax tacos. We already did the recado, so now the other major ingredient is corn tortillas. I'm here with Miss Ilaria Cantun, and corn is the major staple of the Yucatec Maya kitchen and cuisine. So the corn is, is the major staple food in the, the Maya festival culture. They use it for almost everything. Yes. Okay, they, they use it in their daily, daily meals. Eventually they get into the rice and flour and so But before they only corn tortilla. Do you still eat it a mm -hmm. lot here? Yes, we eat it a lot here, especially when we prepare um, special dishes like um, relleno, escabeche, chimole. We use it for panares and tacos, tacos, which is very popular. So they husk the corn like this and then they, then we thresh, thresh the corn to have okay. the Seeds, yeah? And this is cal what? Cal? Cal, in cal. Spanish, cal. Uh, and this, what, what does this do? This, they take the first cover of the corn. You wash this, it. Uh, it, it peel the, the hard cover of the corn. Okay. okay. So th we have to mix this, they pour it in the, okay. the pot. Yeah. Well, this is usually more or less one quart, no? Okay. Two pounds, usually. And they use one little bit, not much. Okay. Like when they scoop like this, for, for a quart of corn. And do you know how they make this? Yeah, well, I, I haven't seen it, but I heard that they use limestone with yes. and, and a, a lot of heat. A lot of heat uh -huh. So this is, so the, they, if you're ever driving on the Hummingbird Highway, they mm -hmm. have various, they have um, some villages around the uh, Santa Marta area mm -hmm. that they have, you see like an igloo. Yes. And uh -huh. a lot of wood, hundreds of degrees, hundreds of degrees um, of fire and heat, and then the, the limestone become the cal. The cal. Uh -huh. You mix the cal with the water, water and then you pour it in. Okay. The color of the corn changes. Sick of the, sick of the cal, the lime. That, that immediately it starts uh -huh. to release. Yes, release the dirt and so. So you take off all what is what you don't need. You throw it. You Perfect. see, the color of the corn changes. It's just bright. Uh -huh, bright, bright yellow. yellow. That means all the, all the skin of this will come off when you cook it from the fire. This you have to do it overnight. Okay. One day before you use the corn for, for make a hat. Put it for the fire on the fire for about 30 minutes. So you know when make it boil, because if it boil it will become um, overcooked, and we call it, it get pozole. After 30 minutes, you check it, and then this will be the end product of it, and then we call this the Mr. Mal. Mr. No? Mal? Uh -huh. You see, when you touch it, you oh do like boy. this, the thing it's come off, see? Significantly softer than, uh -huh, than, the than before. Wow. So this, you have to wash it. Yes. Several times until it becomes clean. Clean and mm -hmm. it will softer and I could see the process of the, the cal the, the what the cal did the white line, line <laughs> is and this would again you can't do this without the assistance of that after washing it several times it will become like this clear the corn will be white or if it is yellow it will be yellow mm -hmm. the texture no it's not yes. slimy anymore yeah, it feels yellow. squeaky clean so what do we do with this and now? After that, then we have to grind it now. So we're going to grind Ready this now? Ready for grind. Uh -huh. Okay. 
So after five washes or so, we have the mistamal. Next step, grinding. Grinding. Mm -hmm. So we have two methods to grind yes. this thing. Uh -huh. We don't have an electric method. No. For us? No. Traditional. <laughs> traditional. This. And this is then the... we use this first traditionally. Yes. And we gradually went in. Add salt. Yes, some of us add salt, some of us just wet it like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The modern way of this, of course, is we have tortillas, yes. countrywide. Countrywide. Uh, um, every wine. culture in Belize eats tortilla now too. Yes. So uh -huh. they would have to do this process, but I'm assuming they have faster ways to do it. Yes, the tortillas have faster ways because they use machines. Okay. Oh, and wine. This is just amazing, right? Because besides getting muscles, <laughs> <laughs> I have a new respect for this process, recado, corn. So can I try the metate? Okay. Brace oh, yourself, right? <laughs> you have to have your leverage. <laughs> now from Mr. Mal, this is now massa. Masa. Mm -hmm. Versatile. Yes. Tamales <laughs> used for a lot of different yes, applications. Tamales, panades. Panades, garnaches, and you make the tortillas. Garnaches, mm -hmm. salbutes. Salbutes. Just different Fry techniques. Tacos. Fry oh, yes. <laughs> Now we are going to wet it. And again, yes. salt is optional. Yes, optional. Mm -hmm. Can you know, buy it from the Milinoga salt? So. Yes. Which mm -hmm. is good too because again the final product dictates if you want salt. Like if you're mm -hmm. making chips, then you add salt to the end, still yet. So. Yes, you add salt to so the end. Okay, so this is the plantain leaf? Yes, we say all the, um, when the, all the old times they use plantain leaves instead of the plastic. Yeah, plastic but bag. nowadays we use plastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So can you so, demonstrate for me? Okay, so you take more or less. Mm -hmm. Depends how big you want your tortilla. Okay. You want it big, big, you'll use more masa. Okay. okay. And you look at that. Make your tortilla. Right, I don't know if I could do that. And no oil? No oil, nothing, nothing, nothing the lone corn. Only salt if you want to add? Yes. Then you add then, it. Then of you course, the kumal. Kumal don't hot. Hot. Mm -hmm. Firewood. Firewood. No butane. No butane. It gives <laughs> character, flavor, and seasoning. Tell me about this kumal, man. And this kumal is an... It looks like a piece of a truck or something. <laughs> yes, it's um, the train rail. Okay. The train rail. My daddy brought it from way back there. You see, this is, San Jose, this is from the chain and this is from a Bedford truck. You know, uh -huh. you know, you know, <laughs> sugar cane Bedford. Yeah. This is a the spring. This is a unique piece. From 1936. From 1936 so we have it. So that has character, that's not a stick that they have on your fire. Nothing. Day and night. As long as we have the proper firewood for it. Yes. <laughs> and also, <laughs> can you show me how to do the tortilla? You put it on now? Yeah, now you put the tortilla like this. I heard this story a long time ago. If you left the tortilla and it started to bump on one side, you got it suck peck. Uh -huh, suck and peck the dog in my head, right? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Perfecto. Look at mm -hmm. that. No, I can do a tortilla here, yeah, but it looks like the map of another village. <laughs> you know, look.
I must say I've been having a great, great time here. I learned how to make the recado from scratch, from the annatto seed. And we learned how to make the mass of the corn, we washed it, we, we made tortillas. And we, we spoke about the, the, the uh, traditional ways that you would use these things for the tortilla, for the taco, and then the recado we do the pibil, we do stew chicken or the, the, the meat for the tacos, no? If you know me, you know I do inspired Belizean cuisine. What that means is that I would take the same techniques and basic uh, recipes from tradition and go off course a little bit but still keeping to the element of our beautiful cuisine. I will do a fish bibil wrapped in a banana leaf with the same ricotta that we made but instead of putting it under the ground I'm going to crust it with a mountain of salt and bake it in an outdoor cast iron oven. After we finish we're going to crack it and reveal the fish pibil. Here I have a uh, some a black snapper, a yellow tail, and a mutton snapper. The mutton snapper looks like the biggest one to me, so what I'm gonna do is now season it as you would ordinarily. Put it on a banana leaf. We smoked it on fire, just as you would. I have some chile molido to give a little bit of pepper and spice. Black pepper salt, you know, always. Remember, we made the recado. Now, this recado, I don't need to explain that it is highly concentrated. All it needs a little bit and we put it in some water. Make the paste. And remember this morning we had this, uh, it has salt, garlic, oregano, cloves, cumin. I mean you have a lot of love already. I can't really do anything more to it. You just have to introduce it to Mr. Fish here and we can clear. So what I can do now is make a little bit of like a garlic and butter. Up some garlic here. Every time you make a flavored butter, you call it a compound butter, which can be anything from parsley, garlic. Today, naturally, we're going to make an anato or a chiote butter. So, you could use some soft butter. I'm going to put some anato. And there, that's a one simple recipe. Already that is anato butter. And if you even want to give it some more flavor, you could always add a little bit of cilantro. There it is. So back to the fish. Same pibil application. Marinate the fish in the recado. No? Not too much because this is highly concentrated. Again, I put some salt and pepper and remember this had salt and pepper already. And finally, because we're gonna bake this, we could put the compound butter, the anato cilantro garlic butter, put it on top, what happens? When you bake it, the butter will melt and create this, just an amazing sauce. I have a little bit of orange, just for acid. Usually people put white wine, but we're in a village, we don't need white wine here. We have nice acid and orange. Right? We're gonna wrap it up like you would a tamal. So we're gonna see you later, but take a little break. And we're gonna put it here on a little pan. So we have the fish. There's nothing more I could do to this fish to give flavor, man. The banana leaf, the smoky, the ricotta, the butter, the garlic, the sweet pepper, the onion. I could take this and bake this now. It would just be a regular baked fish. But in the spirit of trying to call it a fish pibil, which in Maya means to bury, we have to cover this with, you could use earth or something, but we don't want no dirty now with fish. So what I'm gonna do is take a whole, lots of salt. You could take a whole bag of salt. Remember now, not feel like you say that too much salt or you catch pressure like you need pig tail or something. It's not a problem because you have a barrier. So what I'm gonna do is I could add some egg whites. So yes, egg whites and salt. That's the binder, that's the glue. Now, I will take this and put it across the fish. What am I doing? It's creating a little oven within an oven. Mr. Sabel was kind enough to lend us this amazing fogon and oven. So I'll have you do it for me, please. 
Kenya, welcome to my kitchen. Oh yes, this is Miss Juanita's daughter. Yes, so now we have the heat from the bottom, so we need to make an oven, we need heat from all around, so we're gonna put a, the, top. the top. I would say 35 minutes we're gonna come back and check the fish. So now we have the fish in that amazing, amazing oven over there. So what I'm gonna do is take this achiote, not a lot, olive oil, and I'm simply gonna cook this down to make a anato oil. Put this on the fire and have it cook gently for like 15, 20 minutes, and then we're gonna strain it and make the anato oil. Remember now we made the tortilla already, and I ground the corn, we have that ready. That's in the lek. We're gonna make an aioli. And what is an aioli? It's simply a garlicky mayonnaise. But we're not gonna use mayonnaise store-bought. We're gonna make our own mayonnaise. Remember earlier we put some egg whites on the salt and made that pibil? So I have the egg yolks now, and I don't want to throw it away, so I have to make something out of that, right? We have the egg yolks here, add it to the garlic, and simply whisk it. You could also do this in a blender. Always, you have to season. Salt, remember the chile molido? Chile molido is grounded smoked pepper from the village too. Black pepper. Now, always you could add some acid, lime juice. So now we need to stream some oil in there. Remember the oil? Little at a time, little at a time, you know why? Because if you put too much, it won't bind. And if it have problems with it binding, they what you call break. You could always add emulsifiers. What is an emulsifier? Something to help it. So in this case, I'm gonna use some mustard, some Dijon mustard, or French mustard, yeah. It will give body taste, but also it will help it to bind into what we know as mayonnaise. The fish I will cook the fish in some anato oil as well. So we have fried the fish now. In the anato oil. We have our hot tortillas. The aioli that we made, I'm gonna put some on the tortilla. So here we're gonna make the slaw, holchuch slaw. So it's my version of a holchuch. This is ikama, nice and julienne. Julienne carrots, red onions. because we're trying to make a whole church, it will take some acid. Put the orange. And we have some lime juice here already squeezed. And you could just imagine no, that fish loves lime, so that's a good thing. Meanwhile, we have that there. Turn the fish. Fresh tortillas, aioli sauce. Fish cooked in anato oil. We're gonna top it with the slaw, the whole church, with extra cabbage, onions, grouper taco, garlic aioli, fresh homemade tortillas, and hikama slaw. Miss Isabel, you think that thing done? I think it's good. You're sure now? Sure. Okay then, Miss Isabel, I trust you. If not, we have to lower the fire. Aha, uh -huh. mira eso. It looks brown, yes. However, remember I have a whole lot of salt in it. We're gonna break it and see what's inside. Fish pibil.
And there you have fish in seaside crispy bill, tortillas from, from scratch that we made, and the fish taco, the anato aioli, the jicama slaw, thanks to Miss Juanita and Miss Elaria who made the tortillas and the recado, and the warm hospitality in the beautiful village of San Jose Nuevo Palmar, even the rooster happy. And I mean, I had an amazing time and I cannot wait to visit the next village and bring inspired Belizean cuisine to you. I hope you enjoy.